This is gonna be a little experiment. In fact, I'm gonna get a little creative with sepia toning in this video to see if I can get the tones that I'm after. Now sepia toning in general is a little bit too much for most of my images and my taste. Uh, I would like to get something that's just on the slightly warmer side of the tones. And to try and achieve this, I'm going to use a few lesser known, more experimental techniques. So what I did was I made five identical prints using, this is printed on Fomabram variant 111, developed in Ilford PQ developer. And the sepia toning I'm using is a sodium sulfide based indirect developer. And what that means is that there's two steps. It's first you use a bleach to bleach away the silver image, and then you use the sulfide sepia toner to redevelop it into a more permanent sulfide. Now this sepia toner does give off a sulfur smell and gas. It does stink a little bit. What do you smell something? Do I smell something? What am I, hard of smelling? <laughs> it also can fog and ruin uh, photo emulsions. So the first thing I had to do was take out all my paper and remove it from the darkroom. So these prints that I am going to be toning, they were from a previous printing session, so I fully processed them and dried them. So what that means is now I will have to do a pre-silk before I can actually uh, start the toning process. And it's a good idea to do that for at least five minutes in just a water bath. So now that I had the prints soaking for that five minutes, it gave me a little bit of time, so I mixed up the bleach and the toner, the two parts to this toning solution. And what I did was I used the potassium bromide bleach mixed one to four, which is pretty strong. So it's just gonna bleach away the whole image. And I mixed up the sodium sulfide toner by just simply putting 10 grams of sodium sulfide into one liter of water. If you wanna start mixing some of this stuff up yourself too and save money and make really beautiful prints, you can get all these formulas for the toners and the developers in the link in the description with my free ebook. So the first print, I did fully bleach it away. I then gave it a good rinse in the water bath. You wanna make sure you're getting the bleach out of the emulsion before you put it into the toner. And then once I toned it, I was actually really shocked on how uh, warm and kind of orangey brown it actually was. I've never fully bleached and toned uh, this paper before. In fact, I, I've only done this a few times to completion. I usually kind of just do the highlights and work on more split toning in this regard. But in this experiment, I'm trying to find, like I said, a continuous warm tone. So it was too much. Like I, right away I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't expect it to go that far to the sepia side. So at glance, it really just was a little too much for me, but once it dries down, that could change. So with the next print, what I did was a process called pre-sulfiding. And what this means is you're gonna soak it in the actual toner bath first. And I did this for about five minutes, then gave it a good wash, then did a full bleach and bleached the image away but as you can see here, some of the silver was protected by that pre-sulfiding bath. So the image is not bleaching away completely. So I, I left it in the bleach for as long as I could till I thought, you know, this just is not going to bleach any further. And I gave it a good water rinse. And then I put it in that same sepia toning bath. So right away, you can see that this one is much cooler in tone. And I tend to like this one right off the bat uh, a bit better. Now real quick, before we get into full on experimentation mode, I need you to smash that subscribe button so you can learn more darkroom techniques in future videos. All right, so moving on to more of the main part of this experiment for me. What I was trying to see is how much or how in between from sepia to straight print I could get this toning method by adding a warm tone developer to the toning bath. And to do this, I used Agfa's warm tone developer. So this one did not have the pre-sulfiding bath, but I did bleach the image fully, gave it a rinse. Then I put it in the sulfide bath that I had added 500 milliliters of Ilford's warm tone developer to. 
So the 500 milliliters of developer brought the toning solution to one part developer to two parts toner solution. Now I really did think that this combination would cool off the tones to like kind of the deeper uh, browns I was after. But I was a little shocked that this one actually looked very similar to just the straight sepia toned print. So I was a little bummed out and only having one more test print because I wanted to keep one as a control. I kind of aped in on the developer and put another liter and a half of developer, making a total of two liters of developer to one liter of toning solution. And this one started getting a little bit more in the direction of where I wanted to go. Though I didn't like the idea of using that much developer and how much would it take to actually get to the tones that I would want. So at first glance it looks better, but it's still really, really warm. Now my favorite of the bunch is the heavy developer solution, the two to one. It just appears the best in my eye. Only what I would do is definitely reprint this with more contrast and it's still not exactly what I was going for. So I'm glad I did the experiment, but overall I was just a little bum that I couldn't get uh, more in the direction of what I wanted. All right, now once I fully dried these, I did compare them to the straight print as you can see here. This is the straight print uh, compared to the sepia tone experiment ones because I definitely do love the colors you can get from sepia toning. It's just usually when you fully bleach and redevelop, um, like you can see here, it is losing quite a bit of contrast and it just wasn't getting me that chocolatey color I'm after. Live and learn and I do think that this would be a beautiful tonal range for the right image so now I know how to achieve that on this paper. And to compare this to something else I do have a selenium toned version of this exact same print and I really really like the selenium version better than the ones that I got today. It's just Foma Brom 111 in that PQ developer kind of lightly selenium tone is just really, really beautiful in my opinion. What is he doing now? So let me know down in the comments below. Do you like more of the sepia look with uh, this paper or do you like more of the selenium look for this paper? Or maybe you just, maybe you prefer the untoned. I don't know, but let me know. And I do hope to follow this up with some other toning methods trying to ultimately get these tones that I'm after. So if anybody out there has any suggestions, uh, let me know because I would love to give them a shot. And until next time, check out this time-saving way of archivally selenium toning your prints. Yeah.